Hello. In this video, I will show you that how we will use unit testing in our existing project. I already have set up everything to do unit testing in our existing project. So, so I will just show you how we will do that. And uh, first of all, first of all, first of all, I will quickly tell you that what is benefit of unit testing. Unit testing is very beneficial because it it has a lot of benefits. It uh, helps us. It helps to protect our application logic. So, for example, uh, you wrote uh, you have created an application and uh, you have uploaded it to the production everything was working fine then again you made some ch some changes in your application and uh, and you tested in your browser and everything worked fine and you thought that everything is fine but somehow your changes have have broken something on some other page or some other function and you don't know because you did not test that function you just tested the function on which you worked on but your change may have broke may have broken something else on some other page and you did not you could not check that page and uh, you are still thinking thinking that everything is working fine and you did not broke anything and you will uh, just upload those files to the production and then production URL will have your broken application broken changes that is not good because <coughs> real users would see those errors in production so that is not acceptable you should not upload your code before testing each and every function after making any kind of change in your application and that is that is very tough if your application has become so big and large you cannot test each and every function again and again because if your application is very large and you start testing your application it may take almost one two or three or more hours depending on your application size so you you are continuously working on your application you you make you continuously you continuously you are continuously making some changes and you then you cannot test it again and again for every change so also that does not make any sense if you you spend a lot of hours for testing for every change there should be a an easy way so let's come to the point that unit testing helps us in that case so if you are using unit testing then it runs uh, it tests all of your application automatically you don't have to test manually uh, so for example you make a small change in your application or big change unit testing would automatically test entirely your application entirely within few seconds so what is the difference here if you test your application manually then it may take almost one two or three hours depending on your application size but if you are using unit testing you can test your application within few seconds and that would also be uh, an automatic process you don't have to do that manually so what is the process if you want to you if you want to if you want to have unit testing in your project then uh, whenever you start working on your project you sh you must always start unit testing 
command before start working so for example we are starting work so I will open my project open terminal in this terminal I am going to running this command ng test so after running this command this command would open another browser a window in Chrome browser that would show you all progress of your unit testing so just wait a few seconds and you would see what's going on okay so you can see that a uh, unit testing has been completed and all of our specifications has been passed we have total 71 specs specifications and all of these specifications are passed zero failures so that means all are passed and you can also see that this green color also show shows us that it has been passed so nothing to worry at the moment we did not break anything yet so uh, with unit testing there are two ways to monitor your progress you can also watch terminal you can see that everything is passed you can see the last line which is saying that executed 71 of 71 and we have success status here yeah, that's mean it is passed So it is green that means it is passed so one method is that you can watch through terminal and second method is that you can see uh, this external chrome window so this window is more useful because this is more clear to read from here alright at the moment everything is correct so that is why it is passing the test let's break our application uh, let's break our test for we have to make it fail manually so before that let me tell you quickly that if you are uh, working with the unit testing uh, in your application then you always you should uh, you must have spec file for each of your file so that you can include include that file in your testing if your file your component or your service don't have spec file then that file would not be included for unit testing so for example in the application folder we have contacts component and this component have dot spec file so to create dot spec file you have to add dot spec before dot ts so name would remain same as of component but you just have to add dot spec at the end so <coughs> either you would have to create that file manually or uh, you can do that automatically as well so I would recommend that you always use CLI angular CLI to generate your component services and everything because angular CLI automatically generates dot spec file but if you, if you don't use angular CLI then uh, angular CLI would not g automatically generate dot spec file and uh, that's why uh, your file would never would never be tested automatically so take care of that and uh, for example this app dot component uh, app dot component file don't have dot spec file that's mean this file would never be checked would never be tested automatically so we would create a spec file for this component but for now as we already have a 
component spec file so we are ready to test it open this file so you can see that uh, all basic code is already there you don't have to write this code again and again if you use angular CLA to generate your components then this basic code would automatically be generated for you so that is why I recommend that angular CLA so from here as uh, this is a basic file there is nothing big to test there is just one specification which is being tested that is why it is uh, passing and now we have to we now we have to make it fail so for that I will write expect sorry one to be zero so I am I am expecting that one should be equal to zero that can never be possible that's why it would fail okay the benefit of using unit testing is that if you just save it then it would automatically start running unit test again so I will show you that I'm going to save it save all now look at this it has started automatically again so keep this window uh, the keep this terminal and window opened while you're working in your development environment so that you can instantly look at the effect of your change in this window so you can see that I made some change and it has failed and all it, it has become red and you can see that it is saying that one specification has been failed that means I have broken something in the application I did not follow rules I did not follow the desired logic in our application that is why unit testing has failed so now I have to correct it to make it pass so I removed it now you would see that it would automatically refresh restart execution and uh, this time it would pass again because I have removed the buggy code alright that's it that is so simple to use it now I will quickly show you some basic things about the spec file basic code each spec file would have at least one describe describe function and each describe function uh, may have one or more specifications each spec is created using it function so you know uh, <coughs> angular CLI is using jasmine framework framework for unit testing jasmine framework is very user friendly uh, in writing terms because you can see that it is very easy to read it in your code and in the output as well for example if you're looking at output you can see that it is very clear to read for example admin component should create user editor layout component should create that is like a sentence so I have I did not work on other components or services yet I just worked on message service and uh, made it pass so you can see that there are a lot of spec specs in this service you can see that it is very easy to read and understand what's going on 
message service should be created and it should register on new message window event it should start this function and within that function it should load user service using past service so you can write whatever is going on in your function in your component uh, and you can read it easily so you, sh you should write in uh, clear words so that other developers can understand what's going on and what should they follow so in other words uh, unit testing is uh, kind of documentation of your logic you can document your you can you have written documentation for your entire applications logic that can be read from here so i was saying that every spec file has at least one describe and it may have multiple it functions and uh, in it function you can write your multiple expectations so you can see that it is it function is expecting two parameters one is the label of your it function you expect so you can write anything here but uh, i wrote this thing because it is more readable and more easy to understand so so it can look like a sentence like this it should create it should create and i am expecting that the component which is created should be truthy that's me it should not be falsy it should be tru truthy it should have something in it after creating component so you can test your component in as much depth as you want so it's up to you now i will write some specs for you in front of you so that you can understand how we do that but f before that let me tell you that uh, in each spec file you you have to create your component so i created a variable for component that would contain the reference to your component that you can utilize later in your specs and uh, in before each before each function i would recommend you to read jasmine documentation to understand all of this if you want to understand more in depth but it is very easy to understand before each means that this function would run on uh, before every it function so before every it function this function would be executed so here what i am doing is that as you know that every component need a module to run it we cannot have a component without a module so for example you created a component you must have include you must have declare it in a module so for example in app module you can see that we have declared all of our components so that we can utilize we can use those components if you don't declare in within a module then you cannot use that component so so in this case we have a contact component in test environment but uh, uh, n we don't have any module yet so we are creating our we are but in this stage we have a testing module that can be used 
to declare that component so we have to configure that testing module and here uh, within this function everything is same like regular modules so in modules we have declaration we have imports we have uh, providers so in the declaration you can add all of the components which you are going to test within this file and uh, normally we are testing a single component so you can write the that component here and then you have to import all of the modules which are being used within that component like this you can see that we import all of all of modules within the imports array which modules are being used in the these components so in this compo in this component only this module is being used that is why i added this uh, i imported this mod module within this array next is providers providers is the same uh, thing w which we have in normal modules for example this so if whenever you want to use uh, a service you want to add it within providers array so here we need to use contact service within this component so that is why we must have to provide that service so that we can inject contact service within our component to use it so we can directly import contact service here but that is not recommended uh, i do, uh, i personally don't recommend that as well because we the best uh, the good practice is that we should test one component one thing at a time we should not test a lot of things uh, we should not test multiple things within same file we are inside con uh, inside a component and uh, so we should focus on testing only that component not all of things because if you write if you import real contact service within this provider then it would use real contact service it would uh, make real api calls and you have to import a lot of things to make contact service working for you because maybe contact service is using a lot of other modules and then you have to import those modules as well and maybe those modules can cause issue for you and uh, also other downside of using this method is that if you import if you use original service then your unit testing can be slow because you know that if you import original contact service then it would call real api and maybe that api is calling a remote endpoints that may take 2 3 4 seconds or or more time than that and uh, that normally that is not too much time but if you have thousands of spec files and uh, in each file there are thousands of api calls then that would take a lot of time to complete testing that is not good thing you you have to look at your unit testing output instantly after changing after making change in your code but if you have to wait for minutes or hours to look at your code then that is not good idea so to avoid that delay i would recommend you i would recommend not to use con original service i would recommend to use fake service for that purpose so there are many approaches to 
do the same thing uh, this is my approach and many other people have used this approach on internet you can check uh, that as well if you want but this is what I'm using right now and here you can see that I have created a mock service a fake contact service that would be used so whenever we will we would call this service it would automatically fall back to this service this mock service it would use that service actually not originally this service so what I have in this nothing I just create some fake functions in this contact service nothing else the purpose of uh, creating fake function is that we don't want to fail our test we just uh, want uh, we, we just want to make these functions available during testing so that is why I added those functions our main purpose is just to test the functions of current component not other component so we don't care what is inside this file so we can write fake dummy functions here all right this is this was a method if you want to use fake mock service next this is the compile component function a uh, this would compile your component using all of this configuration after compiling you would create a fixture by using this function test bed create component create component would expect the component which, you, which is being tested and uh, to finally create instance of your component you would use this property fixture dot component instance and uh, after that you you would call detect changes so that it can make everything correct for you make make this component ready for you to test so there are there are a lot of things to, to tell you but uh, I don't want to make this video long uh, but uh, this is just short video so that you can start working with unit testing so this was the file which had nothing inside of it just basic setup so I would quickly show you that how I would test uh, other of other functions for this file I let open let's open the file contacts component and uh, you have to check you have to make sure that you are testing each and everything of this file so so far I'm just testing this component that uh, I'm checking that if that component is, uh, component is created or not yet next I have to I have to check I have test this function So let's do it. I am creating a. Okay, f uh, what I do is that for every function I create another uh, nested describe function, describe section. So this is our main describe block. Within this describe block, I would write describe. okay within this you can write the anything I would write the name of the function which I'm going to test so 
we should use arrow function here and then within this block you can write as much as much it functions it blocks as you want it functions are basically your specifications your specs in your unit testing it so you can write all of your expectations for this function so what should it do it should it should have a contact list it should add something in context contact list so it should add data to contact contact list property so now we would call that function and we would check that if that works or not actually before this we should check another thing <coughs> we should check we should test that we check that it, this contact list should have empty array before calling this function that is what we are expecting when contact component is initialized when contact component is instantiated so as we have global variable com component that has our component instance we can use it component dot contact list you can see that it is showing all of our properties and methods within this autocomplete list so i you can write it manually as well by looking at this so you can copy paste and we have to write our expectation within it block expect so at the moment at this stage we did not call get contact function yet so it should this uh, property should have empty array at this stage so let's check that expect contact list to be this thing now you can see that it is testing automatically so <coughs> actually as you can see that 
we are already calling this function on init function on ng on init function so that is why it is giving us undefined here so whenever this component is instantiated it quickly uh, after loading that it quickly calls this function automatically and uh, that function calls this function but we want to check this value before this thing so for that we are running this line detect changes so when component is created then this function is called and then this function is called detect changes then angular detect the changes which were created here and as we are not returning anything uh, that is why it is returning undefined here so for that case we will remove it from here and we would run it manually in our it function so at the moment we don't need to run that function within this it block uh, because we just want to confirm that this property is uh, has this value okay and uh, there are many other methods which we can use to be or to equal we would use to equal because we can we want to compare it with double equal sign instead of, instead of triple equal sign because we don't to want to match types we just want to match normally so in this case it would pass because this list has empty array and we are mat matching against this expectation that would pass let's see that okay all right you can see that it has passed so we ca uh, now uh, let's change this thing should have value you can you can write anything you should have contact list with empty array or with value and then we want to test that it return it prob it really calls this function and uh, we want to make sure that after calling this function if uh, if we get our expectation then it should change this variable uh, this property so for that first of all we have to call our function component dot sorry get 
contacts and uh, this parameter is not being used so I will remove it for now we don't need that so I called this function and after calling this this function it should either change this property or this one so so we would test both of these scenarios so we also test if we get error is equal to null then we should add some data in this variable this variable should have some data after this condition and if there is some error we have some error in this property then we uh, this function should change this property if this thing happens then we would expect that it is going well So now when this fun we will call this function, this function will call a function get contacts from the contact service and uh, for contact service we are using a mock contact service and uh, within mock contact service we have this function get contacts and that con get contacts is returning just empty observable so that so that can be subscribed but we want to return different type of values in response instead of single value so instead of writing uh, res response within this file we would make our response on spec file so as we want to test this block so for that case calling this function should return a response which should have an object with a property called error which should have null value so to hijack this function we, we have to hijack this function and uh, change its output so we for that we there is a, a very useful function spy created by jasmine framework so we would utilize that so before calling this function we would uh, we would create a spy on this function we would create a spy on the function of our contact service so before that we need to have that service so that we can create spy on that service function const <coughs> contact service and how to get that service actually in the test bed variable we can get our service test bed dot get and within this function we have to add the service contacts service we passed the class uh, service within this method and this would provide us uh, service within this variable now I can create a spy on this on any function of this service so spy on function here first of all I will so in uh, in the first parameter we will pass the object that would be our service contacts 
service and uh, in the second parameter we will create write the name of the function on which we want to create the spy so get contacts and uh, and <coughs> okay so after creating a spy we can uh, set any response uh, we can set any return value from this function so write and dot return value and within this function we are returning just one value and uh, as we are returning an observable because you can see that here we are able to subscribe with the response of this function so we have to return an observable and within that observable we have to return this object response object so within this function I will write observable of and within this you can write anything which you want to return with the subscribe function and uh, we already uh, it automatically imported this observable value a variable we also should have of method within this we have to import that as well import sorry rxjx rxjs add observable of okay now we can use of function so within of function you can write any string or any number or any object you can pass any data here so what we're expecting there we are expecting we should return an object with error property within it and that should be equal to null so whenever we, uh, we will call this function then we, will, we would get a value the, with the, uh, an observable that would have uh, an object with error property in it and we can test it expect contact uh, sorry component dot contact list and uh, one more thing we are returning uh, obje an object with error and results properties so we need two properties within that object so first one was error second was results and in results you can write anything uh, we just want to verify so don't need we don't need to write correct data you can write any dummy data within that results very property and to equal you can store this thing in some variable expected response data and pass it there now we can reuse this so after calling this contact function
contact list should be equal to this thing so instead of writing this array this array again within this function I just reused that data so after calling this function contact list before calling the function contact list should uh, have empty array and after calling this function this contact list method should have data to be equal to this now let's check that okay it is passed let's try to break this one two and two instead of three i will write four and let's see what's happen okay you can see that our test has failed because it is saying that let's improve this sentence should add correct data to contact list okay so you can see that it is saying that on uh, we have an array on the left side which in that array we uh, in that array on the second position on the on third position that is as two index on two index we are expecting three but we are receiving four no actually we are expecting that the response we received after calling this function should have three should have four on second index uh, second index but actually it is returning three so that has failed if I change 4 to 3 then it would pass so that is pretty simple and straightforward so as this value and this value is same so instead of writing this again and again I would just reuse okay so after that now we need to test that if we receive some error in this property then value of this property should become false from true and before that we have to verify that before calling this function this should have value true actually this spec should not be within this because we are not calling this function yet so not not be there and similarly we before calling any function we are expecting from this this property should be true so by default it should be true in the beginning
should have true value in and after function is called and failed uh, with error then we should change the expectation it should have false value by default but not by default if error is returned in response so for that we have to repeat this process So this time instead of having null in error I will change some write some error You can write anything within this And we don't need result this time And as we have error in this property so this time this value should become false let's check if that works or not okay that is passed but if I ch change it from false to true then it would fail okay you can see it is failed and uh, you have to debug it and it can it can clearly show you the description the label of it function you can read and understand that what happened wrong and then you can go and fix that issue so that's how we work with unit testing So you we at the moment uh, we just tested this function just one function but you have to test each and every function for every file then that would be great I think that's all for now for unit testing